Economics of Coffee from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. Coffee is an important commodity and a popular beverage. Over 2.25 billion cups of coffee are consumed in the world every day. Over 90% of coffee production takes place in developing countries, while consumption happens mainly in the industrialized economies. Worldwide, 25 million small producers rely on coffee for a living. For instance, in Brazil alone, where almost a third of all the world's coffee is produced, over 5 million people are employed in the cultivation and harvesting of over, of over 3 billion coffee plants. It is a much more labor-intensive culture than alternative cultures of the same regions as sugarcane or cattle, as it is not subject to automation and requires constant attention. Coffee is also bought and sold as a commodity on the New York Board of Trade. This is where coffee futures contracts are traded, which are a financial asset involving a standardized contract for the future sale or purchase of a unit of coffee at an agreed price. The world's largest transfer point for coffee is the port of Hamburg, Germany. Top 10 Green Coffee Producers 2006 in millions of metric tons. Brazil, 2.59. Vietnam, 0 0.85. Colombia, 0 0.70. Indonesia, 0 0.65. Mexico, 0 0.29. India, 0 0.27. Ethiopia, 0 0.26. Guatemala, 0 0.26 Honduras 0 0.19 Peru 0 0.17 World total world total 7.80 Source UN Food and Agriculture Art Organization FAO Consumption See map of world on Wikipedia World map based on coffee imported by country. Map shows gross imports, not how much coffee stays within the country. Some countries re-export significant portions of their coffee imported. In the year 2000 in the U.S., coffee consumption was 22.1 gallons, or 100.468 liters, per capita. Pricing According to the Composite Index of the London-based Coffee Export Country Group International Coffee Organization, the monthly coffee price averages in international trade had been well above 100 U.S. cent per pound during the 1970s and 1980s, but then declined during the late 1990s, reaching a minimum in September 2001 of just 41.17 U.S. cents per, lit per pound, and stayed low until 19 or until 2004. The reasons for this decline included a collapse of the International Coffee Agreement of 1962 to 1989 with cold war pressures which had held the minimum coffee price at US dollars uh, 1.20 or 1 dollar and 20 cents per pound moreover the expansion of brazilian coffee plantations in vietnam's entry into the market in 1994 when the united states trade embargo against it was lifted added supply pressures the market awarded the more efficient Vietnamese coffee suppliers with trade and caused less efficient coffee bean farmers in many countries such as Brazil, Nicaragua, and Ethiopia not to be able to live off of their products, which at many times were priced below the cost of production, forcing many to quit the coffee bean production and move into slums in the cities. The decline in the ingredient cost of green coffee, while not the only cost component of the final cup being served occurred at the same time as the rise in popularity specialty cafes, which sold their beverages at unprecedented high prices. According to the Specialty Coffee Association of America, in 2004, 16% of adults in the United States drank specialty coffee day daily. 
The number of retail specialty coffee locations, including cafes, kiosks, coffee carts, and retail roasters, amounted to 17,400, and total sales were $8.96 billion in 2003. Specialty coffee, however, is frequently not purchased on commodities exchanges. For example, Starbucks purchases nearly all of its coffee through multi-year private contracts that often pay double the commodity price. It is also important to note that the coffee sold at retail is a different economic product than wholesale coffee traded as a commodity, which becomes an input to the various ultimate end product, so that its market is ultimately affected by changes in consumption patterns and prices. The market for soft drinks has been steadily climbing, passing the consumption of coffee in terms of mass of product consumed in the early 2000s. In 2005, however, the coffee prices rose with the above-mentioned ICO composite index monthly averages between 78.79 in September and 101.44 in March, U.S. cents per pound. This rise was likely caused by an increase in consumption in Russia and China, as well as a harvest which was about 10 to 20 percent lower than that in the record years before. Many coffee bean farmers can now live off their products, but not all of the extra surplus trickles down to them because rising petroleum prices make the transportation, roasting, and packaging of the coffee beans more expensive. Prices have risen from 2005 to 2009 and sharply in the second half of 2010 on fears of a bad harvest in in key coffee-producing countries, with the ICO indicator price reaching 172 in December of 2010. Classification A number of classifications are used to label coffee produced under certain environmental or labor standards. For instance, bird-friendly or shade-grown coffee is said to be produced in regions where natural shade canopy trees is used to shelter coffee plants during parts of the growing season. Organic coffee is produced under strict certification guidelines and is grown without the use of potentially harmful artificial pesticides or fertilizers. Conventional coffee is grown with more pesticides than any other agricultural crop. Cotton comes second. Fair trade coffee is produced by small coffee producers who belong to cooperatives, guaranteeing for these cooperatives a minimum price. Though with historically low prices, current fair trade minimums are lower than the market price of only a few years ago. Transfair USA is the primary organization currently overseeing fair trade coffee practices in the United States, while the Fair Trade Foundation does so in the United Kingdom. Commodity Chain for the Coffee Industry The coffee industry currently has a commodity chain that involves producers, middlemen exporters, importers, roasters, and retailers, or retailers before reaching the consumer. Middlemen exporters, often referred to as coffee coyotes, purchase coffee directly from the small farmers. Large coffee estates and plantations often export their own harvests or have direct arrangements with a transnational coffee processing or distributing company. Under either arrangement, large producers can sell at prices set by the New York Coffee Exchange. Green coffee is then purchased by importers from exporters or large plantation owners. Importers hold an inventory of large container loads, which they sell gradually through numerous small orders. They have capital resource to obtain quality coffee from around the world. Capital normal roasters do not have. Roasters' heavy reliance on importers gives the importers great influence over the types of coffee that are sold to consumers. In the United States, there are around 1,200 roasters. Roasters have the highest profit margin in, in the commodity chain. Large roasters normally sell prepackaged coffee to large retailers such as Maxwell House, Folgers, and Millstone. Coffee reaches the consumers through cafes and specialty stores selling coffee, of which approximately 30% are chains, and through supermarkets and traditional retail chains. 
Supermarkets and traditional retail chains hold about 60% of market share and are the primary channel for both specialty coffee and non-specialty coffee. 12 billion pounds of coffee is consumed around the globe annually, and the United States alone has over 130 million coffee drinkers. Coffee is also bought and sold by investors and price speculators as a tradable commodity. Coffee futures contracts are traded on the New York Mercantile Exchange, NYMEX, under ticker symbol, ticker symbol KT with contract deliveries occurring every year in March, May, July, September, and December. Fair Trade Coffee According to the World Trade Organization, or excuse me, the World Fair Trade Organization, and the other three major fair trade organizations, Fair Trade Labeling Organizations International, Network of European World Shops, and European Fair Trade Association, the definition of fair trade is a trading partnership based on dialogue, transparency, and respect that seeks greater equity in international trade. The stated goal is to offer better trading conditions to marginalized producers and workers. Fair trade organizations, along with the backing of consumers, campaign for change in the rules and practice of conventional international trade. However, not all coffee producers are ha happy with the methods or results. Fair trade organizations promote a trade environment in which the coffee importer has a direct relationship with a coffee producer, excluding the middlemen. Coffee importers provide credit to certified farmers to help them stay out of debt with coffee traders so they can develop long-lasting trade relationships. Farmers included in the International Fair Trade Coffee Register are guaranteed a minimum of $1.26 per pound of coffee. The fair trade price from coffee importers. The free trade price of coffee rose above this minimum in September of 2007, but due to recent economic events, the fair trade price dropped back below the minimum, or this minimum, in October of 2008. The fair trade price for conventional natural Robusta coffee has been a dollar and one cents since June of 2008. The price of conventional commodity coffee was also over a dollar in 2008, but about 70 cents in 2009. Fair trade certification is not free. There is an application fee, initial certification fee, membership dues, annual audit fees, and more. Certification can cost thousands of euros for a single plantation. Large corporate farms can often handle the paperwork and recuperate the cost of certification more easily than the small independent farms. As a result, there are plenty of small independent farms that are not fair trade certified, even though they meet or exceed the fair trade standards. Coffee and the Environment Originally, coffee farming was done in the shade of trees, which provided natural habitat for many animals and insects, roughly approximating the biodiversity of a natural forest. These traditional farmers used compost of coffee pulp and excluded chemicals and fertilizers. They also typically cultivated bananas and fruit trees as shade for the coffee trees, which provided additional income and food security. However, in the 1970s and 1980s, during the Green Revolution, the U.S. Agency for International Development and other groups gave $80 million to plantations in Latin America for advancements to go along with a general shift to technified agriculture. These plantations replaced their shade-grown techniques with sun cultivation techniques to increase yields, which in turn destroyed forests and biodiversity. Sun cultivation involves cutting down trees and high inputs of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Environmental problems such as deforestation, pesticide pollution, habitat destruction, soil and water degradation are the effects of, the most, of most modern coffee farms. And the biodiversity on the coffee farm and in the surrounding areas suffer. As a result, there has been a return to both traditional and new methods of growing shade-tolerant varieties. Shade-grown coffee can often earn a premium as a more environmentally sustainable alternative to mainstream sun-grown coffee. Extracts copied 
February 26, 2011, and read March 1, 2011. Text is available under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License. I'm Stephen Starry. That's S-T-E-V-E-N space S-T-A-R-R-Y. Thank you for listening.